Welcome to Around the World in 80 Bottles. Today, we're gonna to travel to Australia in the comfort of your own kitchen. Now, what we're gonna to do today is lamb. And lamb is a very big staple in both Australia and New Zealand, where they raise a lot of lamb. Um, it's one of their biggest agricultural products. And it also happens to lend itself very well to big Australian Shiraz. It's just a natural match. And it goes along with what I'm always saying, which is the wines that people drink in an area tend to coordinate with the type of food that they eat. So today we're going to do some Killicanoon Shiraz, which is one of my personal favorites. And we're gonna serve the Killamans run with the dish, but we're gonna use the Lackey, which is their entry level Shiraz, in the dish because we want the flavors to work really well, but we're gonna save our um, $20 bottle for when we're going to actually drink it and not cook with it. To me, this is one of the recipes where it's worth it to splurge just a little bit on the wine you're drinking because you're really gonna get that flavor. This is not something that we're going to pour off and just use as a marinade. We're actually gonna reduce the sauce down later and so you're gonna get all the flavor of the wine. So this is not one of those places where you wanna use a $3 bottle of wine. But I've preheated my oven to 400 degrees and then I'm gonna add my seasonings to my lamb shanks. And I'm using the Emily Says Add Me in Green Goes With Everything. I'm gonna use an entire head of garlic as well. Now this is really easy because we're gonna strain this after we make the sauce. So what you want is just a little extra flavor. So I just throw those whole cloves in there. Try to get some of the skins off. Don't have to go too crazy. And then I've got about a quarter of an onion. I've just chopped it up as big as you can imagine. And then we've got some chicken stock. You can use any kind of stock you want. Put that in and then our secret ingredient. Now the wine that we're gonna serve this with is Killicanoon Killerman's Run Shiraz from the Clare Valley. And what I've chosen to do is another one of their Shirazes, their Lackey, which is their entry level. And that's because I don't wanna waste my Killerman's Run in the oven, but I do believe that you should never serve something or never cook with something that you wouldn't serve. Now I'm gonna use half a bottle now you, you can tell when you turn it up sideways, you want it to go exactly halfway up the punt. I'm using an entire half bottle here. If you're gonna do four lamb shanks, you will use the whole bottle. Once again, this is a recipe where we're gonna not just use the wine to cook our lamb, but we're actually gonna reduce the sauce when we're finished, and we are gonna be serving that in our finished product. So this is one where you don't necessarily want to use that two or three dollar bottle of wine. You don't have to use a thirty dollar bottle, but you're going to be eating this. So it's not just a byproduct of the cooking. I think it's a good place to maybe splurge a little bit. Plus, it's lamb. I mean, isn't it fun to splurge a little bit when you're serving lamb anyway? Now that this is ready, I'm going to put a lid on it and put it in the oven, and we're going to leave it alone for two and a half hours while my lamb is cooking. I'm going to take this opportunity and go ahead and make the potato puree that I'm going to sit the shanks on when I go to serve it. What I'm going to do is potatoes and peas, but instead of serving them as two different things, I'm going to puree them together. And the reason I want to do that instead of just plating some peas and some potatoes next to each other is you want something that your leg of lamb can stand up in when we go to drizzle out that wonderful Shiraz stock on top of it. I'm going to boil the potatoes and then I'm going to barely blanch the green peas. Then take those two and I'm going to mash them up just like I would mashed potatoes on their own, but it's going to give it extra color and flavor from the peas. Now one of the things I do to make this stand out, because let's face it, you've got lamb shanks and wine and stock and garlic, so you don't want this to be a really boring part of the plate, but it doesn't need a lot of flavor because you have so many other flavors going on and we're gonna make that wonderful sauce on the top. 
So I'm going to simply do something like when I make mashed potatoes with a little bit more chicken stock and some butter, but I'm going to add some roasted garlic and roasting the garlic is going to give it extra flavor. The easiest way to roast garlic while you're already cooking something in your oven is to take that whole head of garlic and put it on a piece of aluminum foil. And then I just kind of go over it a couple times with some olive oil. And you take that and just wrap it up into a little pouch. And I'm going to put that in our oven, which is at 400 degrees, and I'm going to roast that for 30 minutes. I'm going to take it out and let it cool, and then I'm just going to add it to the mashed potatoes, which is going to give it a little extra kick. So we're going to come back and check on that once the lamb gets a little more done. The great thing about this recipe is if you have people coming over to your house, the time that it's going to take to cook will give you plenty of time to clean up, get ready, set the table, because you need to put it in the oven for at least two and a half hours. Somewhere during that time, you might want to turn the lamb, because as the juice boils down, you're going to have some exposed parts. So I like to go in there after about an hour and a half and just flip it over. And then that gives me a chance to say, okay, well, I might leave it in the oven for an extra 30 minutes. You can't overcook this as long as you keep moisture on it. So, I've taken the lamb, put it on a baking sheet, and covered it with aluminum foil, like a little tent to keep it hot, and then put our sauce back in the oven. And we want to reduce that by about a third to a half. So it becomes this rich, thick sauce. Um, not super heavy, but it needs to have some good viscosity to it, otherwise it's just gonna kinda swim around on the plate. So, we wanna strain out all those garlic, um, garlic cloves, all of our onions, and then put it back on the stove and add some Emily G's peach marmalade jam. Now this is the food item that we are experiencing this week because it really adds something extra to our sauce. The peaches and the oranges really give it that zesty tang to the sauce that could be a little heavy and rich. So you've got the garlic and the shiraz balanced with this nice light fruity citrusy component and it really adds something. So we've stirred that in, cooked it down, reduce the sauce, and now we're ready to plate everything together. Now you'll remember our wonderful potato pea puree, which is nice and thick, and we're just gonna make a little mound in the middle of our plate. And then our lamb shake, which is huge. So we're gonna sit that right in there. You can see why we need something thick in the middle of the plate. <laughs> it's kind of hard to contain that thing. And finally, we want to take our jus, all this wonderful reduction of Shiraz and garlic and peach marmalade. And you just want to drizzle that over the top. Now you look at this and you think, where are all the vegetables? But don't forget, those peas are in your puree already. We're basically going to coat this lamb, which is going to make it nice and juicy. You can see those pieces of orange peel and oh, from the marmalade. It's just beautiful. But don't forget, you have vegetables. Peas are blended in with the potatoes, so the vegetables are right there in what you're going to be having. Now, what I've chosen to put this dish with is Killicanoon Killamans Run Shiraz, which is from Clay Valley, South Australia, as I mentioned earlier, and they make the lackey, which is what we use for our sauce, and the Killamans Run's a little bigger, a little richer, tiny bit more oak to it, just a little more pal, and we need that with a dish like this that has so much flavor. Get some of that potato puree in here. First of all, you wouldn't 
know it from watching us make it, but it's really not so intense that it knocks you off your feet. Oh, but the wine just elevates it once again. It just has that oomph to it that when you add in the jus and the lamb and all the flavors from the potatoes, mm, it's just, you'd, you'd think, oh, I've cooked this lamb for two and a half hours. It's going to be too heavy, too intense, and it's really just beautiful. Mm. A lot of it's a peach. It just softens it. And then you get this wine, and it's like, pow! <laughs> right there in your mouth. Mmm. Welcome to Australia, my friends. I love this, and I hope you'll love this. I hope you'll try it at home. It's super easy. Throw in the oven, forget about it for a couple hours, and then reward yourself with a fantastic dinner. So thanks again for joining us this week for Around the World in 80 Bottles. And just a little hint for you, if you have almost all your lamb you don't quite finish the dinner, next week we're going to do a fantastic pizza using lamb that I had when I was in Australia. And so you can just save that and save a step when you're cooking. And we will continue next week on Around the World in 80 Bottles. Cheers!